Since I've started making anime-related content on this channel, a lot of people have been asking me for a list of, like, my favorite shows, or at least a bunch of shows that I recommend that everyone check out. And I figured that's a great idea. I can give you a sort of starting push into anime fandom and give you some shows that you can check out that might expand your horizons a little bit and get you deeper into this medium. The problem is, it's hard to know where to begin. I've seen a few thousand anime shows, and I like a whole lot of them. So, if I wanted to make a list of, like, here's all the anime I think everyone one should watch, you'd end up with a list of about 300 shows, and that's not really helpful for breaking into anime as a whole. So what I've decided to do is once a month, I'm going to make a video about 10 must-watch anime, at least in my opinion, 10 shows that are among my favorites that I recommend to others, that you can watch right now. All of these are going to be shows that you can watch for free online right now. Now I can't promise that these shows will be available in every country. I only know that these shows are all available in the US. These are shows that I was able to find. Some of them might be region blocked or something. I have no idea. If you're from another country, you know, let me know. Maybe I can help you try to find a way around it. There's a lot of things like uh, Hide My Ass where you can get around and use proxy servers even if you're in other countries to get into websites like this. But anyway, for all intents and purposes, this is 10 shows that you should be able to watch for free online. I've got a list of a lot more shows so that I have enough to go on every month, but here are 10 shows to start with that you can watch right now that I love. And I'm gonna try to keep this mixed up so that there's a little bit of something for everyone. First of all, to start with one that's kind of a classic, we have Haibane Renmei, a 13 episode show that was created in, I think, 2003. This is a sort of low-key drama story. It's very poignant and a little bit slow, especially at the beginning, but it's got some big dramatic moments. It makes a lot of people cry. It's that kind of show. What's most notable about Haibane Renmei is that it takes place in a very interesting world. It's sort of like, almost it's like an 1800s R World thing, but a little bit different. It's a fantasy setting, but not a high fantasy setting. It feels like our history, but not quite. And there are these girls who have like angel wings, and it's sort of implied that they're in a purgatory kind of state. It's not exactly clear, but basically it's a drama revolving around this world. A lot of interesting world building, a lot of interesting character building, and it has some pretty, you know, gut punching moments throughout. Noteworthy about this show is that anime bloggers love the hell out of Haibane Renmei. Back at the end of 2009, a lot of people were putting together their top 50 anime of the decade lists, and Haibane Renmei was the highest ranked show out of anything. It was the one that appeared in the most number one spots on the most lists, so definitely critically acclaimed series that I would recommend checking out. You can find that one on YouTube, maybe on Hulu. It's not on Crunchyroll. Those are the three sites I'm going to be referencing, by the way. Up next, a somewhat more popular and relevant show from recent years that's also one of my favorites, Steins Gate. If you enjoy a tightly constructed narrative and really, really interesting characters, you will love this show. It's sort of a mystery story. I can't spoil too much of it, but it involves time travel. So if you're into time travel, this show does a lot with time travel. It's one of those where the time traveling gets incredibly complex. And uh, if you're into that kind of thing, definitely give this show a shot. I would describe it as, it's a drama, but it has a lot of comedy elements. The first episodes of it are mostly character build-up and, like, and set up for what's going to come later. You don't really get into the plot of the show, the real meat of it, until later in. But the dialogue scenes in these early episodes are amazing. Some of the funniest shit I've seen in anime happens in these early episodes. The characters are just a blast to watch fantastic voice acting in the Japanese version. I was already ready to consider this show a favorite before the plot line even really became apparent. And then when the plot did become apparent, it became a lot more dramatic and interesting and gripping. I highly recommend this show to everyone, pretty much. Up next, we'll dive into something a little bit weirder and out there, the Bakemonogatari series. Now, at this point, there's like three seasons and a fourth one coming out or something and a movie of this. I've actually only completed the original first season of Bakemonogatari, but what made this show excellent and makes it one of my favorites is that it's a show about just weird characters and dialogue. You will not find characters like the ones in this show anywhere else for better or for worse, and the majority of the show is just characters standing around talking, really, in this bizarro world because the the art style and animation style are very strange. Hopefully, I'm showing some footage up here or something that'll give you an idea of what the show looks like and you can see what I mean. 
It's by Studio Shaft and the director Akiyuki Shinbo, who've done a lot of shows in this nature. But it's sort of a mystery show, a supernatural mystery show, but the real draw of it is the character interactions and how interesting and or strange they are and the character development. It's hard to even, like compare it to anything because nothing really feels like it but if the prospect of a show that's all about characters just having interesting conversations appeals to you give this one a shot and be warned that it's gonna be out there getting back more into the action side of things there's darker than black which is a cool noir influenced very pulpy show that takes place in like a dark futuristic tokyo and it's about people with special powers who are uh, criminals and or crime fighters with lots of cool supernatural powers. And what makes the powers in the show cool is that each person who has powers has a remuneration where basically every time they use their powers, there's something they have to do like obsessive compulsively afterwards. Like the main character, every time he uses his powers, he then has to gorge himself on food, just eat shitloads of food. And it's interesting to see how these powers and the remunerations work. It's a very tightly constructed show. It's the kind of show that when you go back and watch it again, you'll notice all kinds of things you didn't notice the first time that sort of clued you in to what was going on later in the story so if you're into that kind of thing that sort of narrative structure definitely give this one a watch it's very cool has a great soundtrack by Yoko Kano one of the greats who did you know Cowboy Bebop and stuff like that so give that a watch up next another one of my all-time favorite shows this is another one that's only I think 11 or 12 episodes long but it's a a drama, and it's called Hodo Musko, also known as Wandering Sun. This is a show entirely about gender identity issues with a cast of middle school kids. It's about a young boy who likes to dress as a girl, and his best friend is a girl who likes to dress as a boy. And it's about the sort of interpersonal drama between these characters, all of their friends, the society around them at large. It's very, very low-key. There's Lots of, I guess, melodrama would be the word, but it's not blown up in a way that's obnoxious, is how I'd put it. It's very interesting and fun to watch. I love all the characters in this show. One of my favorite characters in anime is in this show, so for the characters alone, I definitely recommend it. And if you're interested in gender identity issues, you should go no further. This show has a lot to say about them. It's very interesting. The story doesn't really have... An ending or a beginning because it kind of adapts like a few volumes out of the middle of the manga not <laughs> doesn't start from the start or the end but you can watch it standalone and still understand it I think next up on my list if you want to watch something that is dark violent and depressing and disturbing I recommend Shiki Shiki is a horror anime and it's just creepy and disturbing and it gets to be sort of a war story. It's like a microcosm of a war between vampires and humans. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but the way it's presented in the show is very interesting. And this show has like really out there character designs, sort of strange feel to it that makes the whole thing feel unique and distinct from anything else that deals with vampires. It brings up a lot of really interesting moral questions and sort of has you picking sides in its conflict. Do you want to side with the humans or the vampires? Because both sides have some really interesting characters as well as some real shitheads who make you sort of question who you're supposed to be rooting for. And in the end, it is a big, bloody mess. So if you want to see something like that, it's definitely worth a watch. Next up, diving back into drama and romance categories, we have Honey and Clover. This show is about a bunch of college students. I believe it starts with the main character when he first is a freshman and it sort of goes throughout his college experience. And it tackles all sorts of things from just themes of uh, trying to figure out what you're doing with your life, themes of romance and interpersonal drama, all kinds of different things that college students would deal with. I guess you'd call it a slice of life show. It has comedy elements, drama elements, everything to make a well-rounded experience about following these characters throughout their lives in college. And it has parts where it can be really uplifting, parts where it can be really depressing. I mean, it really goes through the whole spectrum of what you might experience. It's got great characters, great things happen in it, and it's definitely a memorable watch. So go check that out. Up next, if you want something more in the realm of a high fantasy show, but not the type with the elves and the whatevers, there's a great unique show called Simone. The show takes place in the middle of a war between two countries in this fantasy world. And in the the main country that the main characters are from, basically everyone is born female. But once you reach adulthood, like once you turn 18, then you go to a magical spring and you decide what gender you're going to be 
for the rest of your life. Needless to say, once again, this is a show that deals a lot with gender identity issues, a lot with interpersonal drama, as the main characters are all maidens. They're all girls who are on the cusp of reaching adulthood. And, and basically, in this universe, then, the people who pilot the sort of ships, or I don't know how to describe them, they're these really weird kind of gunships that the characters pilot, only girls who haven't yet decided their gender and become adults can pilot these things. So during this wartime, all of these girls are sort of going through their adolescence while on the front lines of this battle, and they're allowed to, if they want, go make a decision at any time and stop being a warrior, but you know, they're kind of trying to figure out what they're doing with their lives while they're in the middle of this crisis and, you know, trying to figure out where they're going to go from here. It's got a pretty big cast of characters. All of them are very interesting. It's got an interesting world and stuff. It's just a really cool, unique show that I highly recommend. And last but not least, I've got a big one for you. One of the greatest anime shows ever made. And I found out it's on Hulu, hopefully subbed because the dub is terrible, Revolutionary Girl Utena. This is a show from the 90s that sort of takes tropes from like the genres of magical girl and high school drama and romance, but completely twists them into some kind of insane, bizarre story. Uses tons of symbolism, both visual and dramatic symbolism. It's a art show. This is the kind of thing that deserves to be analyzed, deserves to be talked about in schools and stuff like that. It's a very deep, intricate show with a lot going on thematically. I'd actually say this is again a show that mostly deals with identity and coming of age, sort of like Simone. It's about characters trying to figure out who they are, where they're going, what they're doing, but uh, it handles this in a much more obscure and symbolic way. This show was actually made by the people who worked on the later seasons of Sailor Moon and they had been trying to integrate some of these elements into that show but then they decided that they wanted to make a show that was less needing to be mainstream. They wanted to do one that's not not so much a kids show and so they went and made Revolutionary Girl Utena and it's definitely not a kids show. I don't know what much else to say about it than what I've said but I definitely recommend it to anyone if you are the kind of person who wants to watch classics, if you want to see like what what the best this medium has to offer is Revolutionary Girl Utna is the place to look. In my mind, it's one of the greatest, most classic anime series out there, so I highly recommend it to everyone. It's 39 episodes. It can be a little hard to watch because it's so weird, but at the same time, it's worth it. I think that was only nine, but I've also marked F A Tale of Memories, which is another great show. This one I recommend especially to people who are in the age range of about 17 and you're like, you know, finishing high school, going into college, and you're not really sure where you're going to go with your future. I feel like that's a common thread through a lot of these shows, but hey, anime is usually aimed at young adults who usually don't know what they're going to do with their lives from here on out. But F A Tale of Memories is a lot more of a romance drama show. It's more focused on that. It's based on a visual novel game, like a dating sim type game. It focuses on three different pairs of characters and their relationships as they develop. Most prominently on, there's one where it's a guy who's in love with this girl who loses her memories, I think, every day or so. It's like a, you know, almost 51st date setup, but it's interesting and the characters are likable. And then there's also a love triangle story going on with a different character. There's just a lot of really good drama in this show. If you like romance dramas, you will definitely find a lot to love here. There's moments that are really hard hitting, moments that might make you cry, and some really uplifting stuff, especially towards the end. And I would also say it has some characters that really influenced me when I was that age, when I was trying to figure out things about my future, when I saw these characters, uh, they sort of reached me in a certain way. So I haven't seen the show in a long time, but I definitely want to rewatch it. And the fact that I know I can find it online now means I probably will sometime soon. But anyway, if you're into those kind of shows, go check that out. Watch all 10 of them if you have time. Check them all out. Or if you just like certain genres, check out the ones that seem like those certain genres. That's all for this month. And I'll provide you with more next month. Have a nice day.